Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our five minute Bible study through every chapter of the Bible. We are talking about Deuteronomy chapter four today. And if you don't know, you can get all these PDFs for free online, use them for your personal Bible study, maybe have people from your church over and study through the, the text of the scriptures, family Bible study, whatever. And there will also be in the future a book available with hard copies of all these studies that you can buy on Amazon. So check the description. Maybe that book's out. Maybe it's it's not yet, but there will be a link down below. Deuteronomy chapter 4. When did these events happen? Pretty much the same as the first three chapters of Deuteronomy. These events occurred immediately following the Israelites' 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Deuteronomy is a record of Moses talking to the Israelites before he allows them to go over into Canaan. Right before Moses' death, actually. The Israelites were in the wilderness from approximately 1490 to 1450 BC. And this is right at the, well, really after that period has ended, but very shortly after. So this is about 1450 BC. Our characters really haven't changed. We're gonna talk about the Israelites who are a large nation of people who are making their way to the land of Canaan. They are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And their leader, who we've already mentioned, and if you've been studying with us, you know him very well. His name is Moses, uh, and he's God's selected man to lead the children of Israel to the borders of Canaan. Where exactly was Canaan? Well, you can see it on the map. It's to the west side or to the left side of the, the uh, what is that called? The Jordan River, <laughs> which is that line up on the... Uh, the top right corner of the map there. Now, the Israelites haven't made it there yet. They're still on the east side of the Jordan River. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that Moses spoke the words that are recorded in Deuteronomy when the Israelites were in Moab near Mount Pisgah, which you can see Mount Pisgah just to the right of the Dead Sea. Now we move over to our outline. Let's break this chapter down. I've got the first section being verses 1 through 14. Moses commands the people to keep God's law. So Moses instructed the Israelites to honor God's law as they conquered the land of Canaan and as they made it their home and settled there. He warned them not to add to God's law or to take anything away from it. The Israelites were supposed to cherish God's law because it was unique among the nations. They had a special relationship with God that no other nation had. Our second section, verses 15 through 28, I've entitled it, The Prohibition and Punishment for Idolatry. So when God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai back in like the book of Exodus, and he gave him his law, his commands that he wanted his people to live by, he didn't appear to Moses or to the people in a physical form resembling something in the natural world. God's not like the, the things in the natural world, right? He's spirit. He's, he's supernatural. So because of that, the Israelites were not to make figures to represent God from things that they knew in nature, and they were not to bow down in worship to any man-made idol. Now, if the Israelites did that anyway, and they forgot God's law after they made Canaan their home, then God promised a punishment on them. He promised to scatter them among the nations and to make them the servants of men who worshiped false gods, right? So the true God would pull back his protection from them. They'd become subjugated to these people who worshiped fake things. And then in a short section, verses 29 through 31, we have a promise of God's future mercy. So God, speaking through Moses, foretold of a time when the Israelites would disobey him and would lose the land of Canaan. He's talking about sometime in the future. If you know the rest of the Old Testament, you'll know that this indeed happened. He said that they would disobey him in the future, they would lose the land. But God promised the people that if they would repent and would return to him, then he would be merciful to them and he would keep his covenants with them even though they had been faithless. And again, if you know the rest of the Old Testament, you'll know that he kept that promise as well. In our fourth section, verses 32 through 40, it's entitled Israel's Special Relationship with God. So Moses did not want the people to forget the privileged position that God had put them in. No other nation enjoyed this kind of special relationship with God. The Israelites, they had heard God's voice, which was incredible. They had seen him in the, the cloud, the fire, the darkness on, on Mount Sinai. And God had personally delivered them from slavery uh, to in, in, in Egypt, right? With the 10 plagues, they had seen all of these incredible things that God had done. And no other nation got to see those things. 
These things were done, Moses told them, to convince them that they worshipped the one true God and to impress on them the importance of obeying his commands. This wasn't a God who was distant from them, right? who wasn't active in their lives. This was a God who, who they needed to be aware that he was there, that he was powerful, and that he was to be obeyed. And then section number 5, verses 41 through 43, there's a lot of things going on in this chapter. Moses, is, Mo, Moses establishes cities of refuge on the east side of Jordan. So Mo, Moses appointed Bezer, Ramoth, and Bashan as cities of refuge. Now, what were cities of refuge? These cities offered protection to those who had accidentally killed another person, what we would call manslaughter today. And if you want to know more about those cities, you can read Numbers chapter 35 verses, well, you can pretty much just read the entire chapter to get the whole idea. Okay, then finally, verses 44 through 49, finishing out the chapter, is just an introduction to the presentation of God's law that Moses is going to give throughout the rest of the book. So the final verses of this chapter set the stage for Moses' speech that begins in chapter 5. We'll discuss that, Lord willing, tomorrow. And then finally, because our outline was so long, we've got a short application today. I think Moses does a really good job at presenting a balanced picture of God in his words to the Israelites and in, in what he's spoken in these first couple chapters. In chapter 4, we see God as both, quote, a consuming fire who will not tolerate wickedness and who demands justice, but we also see God as a merciful God, according to verse 31, who happily offers forgiveness and mercy even to people who have betrayed him in the past.